I'm listening to a Huberman podcast right now on the amygdala, and I find it fascinating. Um, do you know who you know who Huberman is, right? Mm-hmm. He's a guy. He does like long form podcasts, and he talks about neuroscience and nutrition and all kinds of different things. But he's interviewing a woman who um, has done research on the role of the amygdala, and so a lot of people think that that kind of part of the brain is primarily responsible for our fear response. Mm. Um, <laughs> but the idea is that she's done research um, around how it's responsible for reward and for fear. So if you think about like the way that we think is like either from the bottom up or from the top down. So <laughs> keep going, keep going. You're in too deep now. I mean, I'm okay. interested. Yeah. Okay. So from the bottom up is kind of like what if you hear, let's say you hear a dog bark, immediately your brain is thinking, am I in danger? Mm -hmm. And so that's from the bottom and that's your amygdala saying you need to pay attention to this noise. But then when you turn around and you see the dog behind a fence, your prefrontal cortex gets involved and says, oh, I'm safe. So I can stop. I can move out of fight or flight, mm-hmm. and I can keep walking the way that I that I am. Now, what you typically want to do, if you can, if you can control your environment, is go from the top down. So staying, so um, so interpreting things from the perspective of your prefrontal cortex because that you're safe. It, yeah, okay. or or just the things that you're engaging in, you're choosing to. Um, be thoughtful about specific things. And we have more of an opportunity to do that now in our context because we're relatively safe. Oh, yeah. Um, So the things that trigger amygdala responses from us are typically social interactions. (laughs) Mm. So like... In like the modern day. Yes, because you're not running from a lion. You're not wondering when your next meal is going to be. So we're Mm. we're interpreting our social interactions based on okay, like this this is our brain um, Hmm. deciding: am I safe? Am I not safe? So how do you choose to to how do you choose the prefrontal cortex over the amygdala? Then how does that work? Um, You have to stay curious. Hmm. So that's a big part of it. Is like. Because the amygdala is, like, designed to give you one, like, I'm going to escape. Like, one solution. And this is the way I see out. But if you – but the prefrontal cortex is able to, like, hold a lot of different variables at the same time. Mm. And so, yeah, Mm. stay curious. Great advice and also a great (laughs) slogan for the back of a Jeep. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Stay curious. And a scripty font. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the prefrontal cortex doesn't develop till 25. Is that the, that part of the brain? Oh, may, for, I mean, you, yes, when you're born, you don't have, you have an amygdala, like that's <laughs> what you're born okay. with, but the prefrontal <laughs> cortex d- does develop over time. Um, but mm. I don't know if that's like when it's I can't fully remember developed. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, ha- yes, because I think... Have you ever heard like males' prefrontal cortex develop later develops uh, later I than women? Yeah, <laughs> check. <laughs> I can I can yeah. confirm that's true. Yeah, so yeah. That, like, I'm one part of the solution. study. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have three examples. Yeah, yeah. So if we're always in a state of fight or flight or stress, then it's going to be really difficult hmm. to slow down long enough. Yeah. To actually listen to what and probably true, yeah. What God might be saying hmm. to us. That's good. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. we yeah. Um, well, let's talk about it. So we started a series this week mm-hmm. called How to Hear God. And we're gonna talk about it for four weeks. Why did we decide to do this? <laughs> <laughs> I think okay. Because we needed something to talk about. (laughs) That's true. Fair. It's interesting that we were sitting in a meeting Mm -hmm. where we were trying to determine what the next series was going to be. Yeah. And we were all kind of at a loss. Round and round. And at the very end, we prayed. and Yeah. Yeah. Truly. And Blake says, what about this? And he said, that's it. And so we decided to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we heard God. 
in that moment. I hope so. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know that we would always think that that's the way that people hear God. And mm-hmm. so we're going to take several weeks and kind of unpack what this actually looks like because yeah. a lot of times people have s- sensationalized mm-hmm. this idea. Yeah, even the phrase how to hear God is like, okay, I don't know. It feels very lofty. And then also I, I can't help but picture, like you said this weekend, Moses at the burning bush, just like those types of moments mm. where it's undeniably God, undeniably mm-hmm. God, very miraculous. Mm-hmm. Like when you sure. think how to hear God. Yeah. So you're kind of looking for that. Yeah. Write it in the clouds <laughs> moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not always that way. Yeah. Maybe most often. I found your um, your text to uh, Casey and I to be actually really helpful oh, to, to develop my sermon. Yeah. Surprisingly, the this the uh, you were just texting us about hey podcast this week we're going to record. Here's some questions that we yeah. might. You know, they're just three or four, but they were really helpful, and they were something m- more to do with the the fact the the fact of. People feeling as though this feels unrelatable or yeah. out of mm-hmm. out of touch. Unattainable. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that was really helpful because originally the sermon I was developing was a, l- a bit more theological. Okay. Um, and a bit probably a little less in touch with practical reality. Or I, I ended up sharing stories just because I thought that's probably what I need to do is yeah. just talk about like just demystify this a little bit. Um, That's a really good word for it because it does feel very mystical. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. And I loved when you talked about the televangelist kind of <laughs> like, because that's how it seems. Sure. Very mm-hmm. much. I, I don't know. This, <clears throat> I've got a word. I know what I'm, you know, and here's what we're Super doing. Super authoritative. Yes. Um, kind of spectacular. Yeah. Um, Maybe you only have one type of personality. In a certain kind God. of voice. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people feel like that's not me. I couldn't do that. I grew up that way. This is, I mean, the, 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 the ironic thing about this whole topic is like, this is not something that... Even as confident as I maybe appeared to be this weekend in telling people that you can hear God, this is part of my own struggle to wonder, can I hear God? Hmm. Um, and have wrestled with it at, at different times in my life. What's been really good about this, what I love about teaching is that you're forced to think about something for so long um, that you have to wrestle with it. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, you can't, at least I can't get up and talk about something that I've only gone kind of surface level deep on in my own heart. And so I've had to, I've had to think this through, you know, in lots of different ways and, and confront my own doubts about, I don't, I I don't, um, yeah, I just, this whole, this whole area is one of the areas where I have some of my, have had some of my greatest doubt battles Hmm. about Hmm. God have to do with miracles, supernatural stuff. Um, I can, the, 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 what would I say? The philosophical arguments for God, I feel like, are really good, but the the pragmatic ones are the ones that I, I have I have a hard time with. Mm-hmm. So you know, can I hear from God? Do miracles really happen? That sort mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. That's hard for me. Yeah. So as you were, what was the process like? You already kind of described it a little bit, but how did you, as you were writing this week, did you find? Any point where you wanted to like hit the eject button? <laughs> Not this week, no. But I think because uh, I'd kind of been through, you know, part of my you could call it dark night of the soul. I guess it is. I, I think sometimes, often the creative process works that way. When you're working on something, you you do have a, um, I don't know, a a, a difficult moment. <laughs> Generally, you know, this is never going to work, kind of thing. Yeah. And I, well, yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel that necessarily about the sermon. We'll never get there, but just w- what do I believe about all of this? And um, no, I, you know, for me, what it, what it, what it was 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 just kind of going through the roller coaster. So, so there's so much noise around this. Let me put, say it that way first, the, because so many people, you don't like Christians just in general. Depending on, there are going to be, and, and so so some people listening to this will just be like, yeah, I'm with you, Wit. Like, I also wonder, 
do I hear, can I hear God's voice? And then there's going to be others of you listening that are going to be like, of course I hear God's voice. I hear it all the time. And I know those people. Yeah. And they're not shy about mm-hmm. saying, oh, the Lord told me this. The Lord said that. And it's just like, uh, they just, some people maybe are, are gifted with uh, belief. They just, of course that's true. Of course mm-hmm. God speaks. It just seems to them like it's, like, why would anyone even question such a thing? And and the trouble that I have with it is that I've, I've I mean, you're in ministry and whatever long enough, Christian long enough, you're going to meet people who God told him to do stuff, and then you're mm. going to watch watch whatever it was that God told him to do fall apart, disintegrate, yeah. and doesn't work. Yeah. And and it's like, okay, was that God? Who 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 said that to you? Where did you get that idea? And so there's so much noise around God said, God said, God said, God said that you can kind of even even start to doubt it yourself to wonder does is this all just our own thoughts and imaginations or, or are we just making all this up? We just yeah, and so and so I had to you know as we started talking about about this I I yet again it wouldn't be the first time and probably won't be the last in my life that I go through some kind of some kind of brief <laughs> it's going to freak people out <laughs> crisis of faith <laughs> if you will I I, um, I don't think it's that scary I think that it's something that you have to do I you, yeah like a lot of times we do need to go to the bottom of whatever that thing is for sure yeah um to yeah. kind of come to a place where we can speak on it with authority so then on the other side of that though what was cool is that I started to see and I really got so much out of sharing the stories that I got to share this weekend because I I was just reminded, I'm like, oh, yeah, God has spoken to me mm-hmm. in ways that, like, I know he spoke to me. And that was, a, like, a massive turning point in my life. And I've got several of those, you know, not, like, weekly that happens, not even yearly, but there are moments in my life where I could go, yeah, that was the Lord mm-hmm. speaking to me. And mm-hmm. then and then I have, other, I have other stories of people coming to me with a word from the Lord that was not from God at all, Mm. but they're telling me that. I remember when I was a kid, some guy, we were at a church in Minnesota. I was just getting into basketball. This was probably seventh, eighth grade. I wanted to be in the NBA, maybe ninth grade, maybe maybe a little older. I don't know. I wanted to play in the NBA, you know, as every kid did, and I was obsessed with Michael Jordan. And so this, um, so I was into it, you know, and I'm, I don't know, I'm probably telling people this, who knows. And there's this guy that, you know, I'd been hanging out, was there, my dad was speaking, whatever, and he took me on a trip with him. I don't even know who this guy is, couldn't tell you. But he came up to me. Um, I feel like maybe I knew him while we were there, you know, somebody that I met while we were there, but he came up and he was just like, hey, I just, I, I, I want to, I was praying and I was just thinking about you. And the Lord told me to tell you this, that if you'll, if you will pray in the spirit, for those that don't know what that means, pray in tongues before every basketball game, you will like go to the NBA or something like that. Mm, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. golly. <laughs> yeah. And even at that point. <laughs> and, and how did you feel? And what did you do? <laughs> Uh, you know, I wasn't sure if he was right or not. I yeah. kind of yeah. had the sense that probably that's not true. Probably yeah. would have done better practicing more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, people tell you stuff like that, yeah. you know? Oh, and, yeah. You know, I mean, it didn't it didn't wreck me or anything. Yeah. Like, I'm not the kind of person that holds on to those types of things for mm-hmm. too long. I mean, I still remember it, but I didn't like believe that really strongly into my high school years. Um you know, but I mean, yeah. that's the like, so, so you, I mean, depending on the kind of church you come from, you yeah. know, in the back, like, there's probably a, a lot of people listening that they've been a part of a church where someone mm-hmm. gave them a word or mm-hmm. told them something that maybe was confusing or, mm-hmm. or weird or whatever. And yeah. you wonder whether or not it was God. And I think sometimes we have a tendency to do that whole God said or God told me thing because we want to. Not, oh gosh, I don't know. We we want to add some validity to our experience of God in some ways. Like, I, I do think that that's like kind of yeah. what the kind of space that I grew up in. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. Rather than maybe carrying those, like, I, I, I feel like yeah. the Lord might have said, and you can take this or leave it. Yeah. But... 
I'm, I just want to tell you. You um, know, sometimes I think, I think, and I've had this happen too, people with, I think, more empathetic personalities feel things on behalf of other people and they read into someone else's experience or whatever they see of someone else, their own feelings mm. and emotions. Mm. I, I would, in other words, a- to look at someone and say, I would be feeling this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, I've had this happen, sometimes people feel more about my situation than I feel. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. it's just like, I'm not stressed, but they are yeah. Yeah. on my behalf. It's like secondhand yeah. embarrassment, what's secondhand emotions. Yeah. 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 People look at my situation and they read into it, well, he must feel this or that or wonder yeah. about these things. And so then they want to come up and speak into that because they think that's what I must be feeling. And I think they, they assume that that must be the Lord telling them these things. And it's, I, sometimes I'm just like, look, you're, that's you, but that's not me. It's yeah. a, you know, and, and yeah, I think sometimes that happens. So mm-hmm. as we're talking about like why people would do, would, would do some of these things, I think sometimes people are also just maybe hungry to be used by God oh, in some sure. way yeah. and, and are looking for opportunities to do that. To be used by God and to hear from God, but yeah. they feel like it needs to be in this kind of specific way. Yeah, and because of yeah. how it's been demonstrated. So yeah. usually through like what would be called a word of knowledge, which mm-hmm. is like insight into a situation. And mm-hmm. so that would be God-given. And that's totally a thing. It is, yeah. Totally a thing. But it... but. But I, yeah, but that's, so that's what they've seen demonstrated in church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so then, then they want to, you know, kind of play that out on a smaller scale, smaller, smaller audience rather than. I've had, I've had both a good thing told to me and like really odd things. Like I remember as a, like a teenage girl in church, I, an older man coming up to me. And saying that God told him that I had a heart of stone. Oh God! Oh Oh, God! I was like, oh cool. And you're like, am I just like a jerk? What is wrong with me? Yeah. And so you you don't want to give it too much credit, but then you're like, oh, okay, probably not the Lord, but maybe someone is perceiving me as rude, and I need to Mm. like. Be a little gentler. <laughs> you I don't have know. a heart of stone. <laughs> you have wow. a heart of stone. Oh, but man. then on the inverse side, I remember just randomly in church one Sunday. Uh, no, it, maybe it was like a prayer afternoon or something like that. I was just feeling so low and lost as just a young girl. And my older brother came up to me and mm. said, hey, I was praying and I don't, you know, this is weird, but... I really just felt like God um, wanted you to know that He loves you, and mm. he, he sees you, and I see you, and yeah, well. we're, you know, He's He's got you. You're okay. Yeah. And like so, like to, I've had I've experienced, and so I know, yeah. I know that the, I know my older brother. You know, that's a meaningful mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. he was praying in some sort of burden. I don't know. Yeah, that's beautiful. A feeling, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And then on the inverse, you can have people that. You maybe weaponize it a little bit. Yeah, I think I think sometimes in our eagerness maybe to be used by God, we're inconsiderate of other people. We think mm-hmm. we're thinking about other people, but mm-hmm. we're not. Like when someone who feels as, like who has a real burden to pray for the sick wants to pray for the person who just came into the church who's in a wheelchair or something, and they just don't really even know their situation. Yeah. They're they're just sort of inserting themselves into. I was reading uh, some, somewhere I read uh, about a oh man I cannot remember who this was um, where I read this, but I think it's someone maybe who was blind or whatever. It was just like if I had like how many times I, or deaf I've been called in front of the church wherever I've been to be prayed to singled out and prayed for, and it just like please stop. Yeah. But they don't really get it. Come on up here, and and so now you get to become someone else's faith kind of project, yeah, and- or someone else's me and God experiment. And it's yeah. not really done out of love for the that. That's the thing. Is like what is mm. you know it reminds me of what First uh, um, Corinthians thirteen. Mm-hmm. 
Without yeah. love. Yeah. It's like a clanging symbol. So I, I think the idea is that when our efforts to please God or to, or, or to do God's will happen apart from love, and I think that that's what happens a lot mm-hmm. of times with words or whatever, we're not really loving someone mm-hmm. else. We're using someone else as a as an experiment for our, you know, to, there's there's not a there's not the humility in it that needs to be there, which is, yeah. or or maybe even even the relationship, and I think wisdom can govern a lot of these things. You know, maybe we'll get into this as we get into this series. Hopefully, maybe in this podcast we can talk about it. We're today kind of launching off talking about like words from God that He might give to you about someone else. But I would say, man, those are those are. Um, you know, do you have the relationship for that kind of thing? Yeah. Is this is this done in wisdom, for or sure. are you just is it? Yeah, and I think, yeah. I think, I think a lot of people get hurt, or um, yeah, we're just we're we're, um, what's the right word? We're we're in, un- inconsiderate. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of Christians yeah. are inconsiderate of other yeah. people. Um, in this, in this area, I think we could do a lot better job. Yeah. A lot of times it's because we don't really know what's going on inside yeah. of ourselves, which is kind of mm. what you're talking about. Like when you say something to someone um, that you're saying, well, I feel like this might be from the Lord, the way that – but it's coming through you. Yeah. So you have to consider what might be going on on the inside of you. Oh, wow. To like, be able to yeah. offer that to someone else in a way that's actually going to be – beneficial to them. Yeah. So you came though to the conclusion yeah. that God wants yes. to speak to you. Yes. I'm convinced after, of it. <laughs> okay. You're convinced of it. That's a big deal. I what am. what brought you to that place? Well, it, really just the idea that that God has has chosen to reveal himself. So mm. for me, and this is really where you know, we'll get into this next week, but as God speaks primarily through Scripture. I think that's the top place that God speaks. And I think having what I would call a biblical imagination, we'll talk about that, giving God, learning to speak His language, which would be Scripture, I think is... So for me, for me even personally, I value study so much more than experience. Yeah. Um, so I'm not... I. I I live more by the ideas that I can prove in my mind than I would the experience that I've had. I, I doubt my own experience. So I would I so would you say though that the study is the experience? It, it could be, but yeah. for me it's for me I want to see I need I need to I need it to make sense. Yeah. That doesn't mean that I need everything about God to make sense. I can accept the, right. the mystical the, parts mm-hmm. of our faith. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about doctrinally or even um, just the, the I don't know the, um, the way that we think about this. It, it needs to logically make sense. Mm-hmm. And so for me, thinking about. God revealing himself to mankind. Mm-hmm. So this was a thing I I did in the the sermon which was just talking about God entering into our world or relating to our world the way that that say George Lucas would relate to Luke Skywalker as a as a creator of a character. So George creates Luke. I was thinking about this. He spoke him literally wrote him into existence. Um so there's a lot of similarities between what God does and even what we do when we create characters in this way we we're, we're creating people we're writing creating worlds um um that exist in some way not to the degree that God can create a world but in some sense that's what we're doing it's kind of interesting um parallel there and so Luke Leia Han Solo Darth Vader all the characters are all created by George the thing I said on Sunday, I think, was maybe more helpful than I did on Saturday. Is just you can watch all the movies and never once hear the name George Lucas. That's one name you won't hear, though he created all of them. And the reason that no one talks about him is because, from a character perspective, they're completely unaware of his existence. They have no idea. They don't. They don't. They don't seem to understand that they're a part of a universe that's been created out of the mind of one guy. And that's the way most movies work, you know, unless they're what's called the sort of fourth wall comes down. But 
But they're not aware of George, and they wouldn't be aware of George, and except he made himself aware to them. This is, and the, the key idea is that that God doesn't live inside our universe. So I think this is, I think this is where a lot of people get their thoughts about God mixed up because they think they we imagine God is if he's subject to the same laws and boundaries and limits that we are subject to, beginnings, endings, uh, space, time, all of this. But if you could envision a God outside of all the laws of, of kind of our natural universe, then, 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 then I think you're coming closer to where God actually is and how God actually is. Um, and, and, and so for God to, so think, th- uh, maybe a helpful thought to think about is, uh, think about trying to describe to a fish in the ocean, the world outside of the ocean. They can't go there. They physically cannot visit that without, and interestingly, without death. It's kind of similar to our, our spiritual exp- I mean, it is like, yeah. you cannot enter the other world, but through the pathway of death. Interestingly, like God, we can enter their world; they can't enter ours. Hmm. Um, and God can enter our world, but we cannot enter apart from death, His world. So it would be hard, I dare say, impossible for a fish to imagine what anything above the surface is like. They have no concept of it. Um, even 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 the laws of gravity are functionally different in the water than they would be. Um, you know, on land. So it's it's like that it's sort of God exists in, a, in another in another way that in another dimension or another place that 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 is inaccessible to us. And the only way we would know His existence is if He chose to enter our environment, to enter our world, the place that we live. And of course, that's exactly what He did. That's what we get in the incarnation of of Jesus. Why all this makes why all of this matters on the whole topic of God speaks is that the idea that God speaks is is God revealing himself to mankind. And the the, the fact that Jesus came is God revealing himself so fully that there's nothing left to reveal. That he's shown mm-hmm. himself completely. I mean, Jesus, what it's in John somewhere, late John, where one of the disciples says to Jesus, show us the Father and that'll be enough. Yeah. He's like, well, you've seen me. Yeah. If you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. So God has revealed himself fully in Jesus. I like the Michael Reeves quote, there is no God in heaven who is unlike Jesus. That God has revealed himself. And what that means to me is that if if God then would reveal himself through speaking or the word made flesh, if he would go to that length to, to enter my world, then how could I doubt that he wants to be known? He's absolutely made himself available to be to to be so if i'm going i guess the way my mind works is if i'm going to believe in jesus at all <laughs> then i then i then i have to accept that 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 jesus and if i'm going to believe that jesus is god then i have to believe that this is a god who wants to be known by mankind that has made himself available to be known he's not at a distance he's not waiting for us to find him he is mm-hmm. pursuing us. And of course, that then gels with the rest of the story of Scripture. It was God who went looking for Adam and Eve in the garden after mm-hmm. they'd sinned. It was God mm-hmm. who showed up to uh, Moses at the burning bush. It was God who called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldees and told him to go to a land that he would later give him as an inheritance. It was the Lord that that meets with Samuel and says, go to the house of Jesse and anoint David as king. God is the one moving. He's the first mover Mm-hmm. in our relationship. And so what that just tells me is that God wants, he's initiating relationship. So it's not like we're having to, you know, hey, God, wake up, pay attention. I have, I, I need to talk to you. Really more, he's He's working to pursue us far more than we're looking to, working for, or working to pursue him. Yeah. And that's and that is just that idea that God is moving towards us and an unceasing invitation to um, communion and to be with him is kind of, it's very encouraging and emboldening. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So what would, what should the person 
who knows or who believes you yeah. or who believes that yeah, this yeah. is true, yeah. that God wants to speak to us? What should their posture be? Yeah, I, I, well, I think I think I think what I would call that is faith. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a a confidence that that's true. So I can, if I can't, if I believe that, here's what's great, then I can kind of shut that door in my mind. So I don't have to be thinking when I'm praying, do you care? Yeah. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Um, Are you there? Even though I may not feel anything, and even though I may not get an answer immediately, that's another really key thing, and I didn't get to get into it this weekend, hopefully, as we get deeper into the series. I think that was one of the questions that you asked, I think, um, Lindsay, was the, yeah. the idea of sitting in, so hearing from the God picture. feels like yeah. me being alone for a really long time waiting for God to respond yeah. mm-hmm. and not hearing anything. Yeah, the picture people I, I could totally have relate to that. how to hear God, the, the how-to would be sit in a room, lights off. Yes, yes. Several hours, head yes. down. Hmm. Not hearing much here, like that sort of. And if you're willing to go through yeah. all of that, he then might maybe speak. he might speak to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I can so relate to that. And there's part of the 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 dutiful, guilty part of me that feels like that's what I should do in order to get God to respond to me. That He would respond if I was willing to do that. He would definitely respond. But I, I like this to your question, the faith and confidence to go, no, God wants to speak to me more than I want to hear him. Mm-hmm. So I can, again, I can shut that door in my mind and I don't have to to doubt that anymore. And I can accept that God wants to talk to me. And then what that means is that, and for me, where, where this really gets good, is then you can ask God for things and then rest. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to just keep... It doesn't mean I don't pray about it more than once. What I mean is I don't have to just, like you say, sit in a dark room for hours till I hear a response, but rather pray and then rest mm-hmm. and, and, and allow some space. And what I've found is that often, often the answer comes when I'm not looking for it later on, well disconnected from the prayer. Almost never. Does it happen that I pray, ask God a question, and I feel some kind of answer immediately? That almost Mm. never happens. Mm. What's far more common is, Lord, what about this? Would you give us wisdom for this? Help us to know what we should do. And within a day or two, it becomes clear. what. And sometimes, circumstantially, it works out that way. Like, what I mean is that the circumstances of the situation present a clear path forward. In in the case where the circumstances don't, and this just happened to me, don't, don't make it clear which way I should go, what has happened to me in those instances is that there has been some kind of what I would just call spiritual leading, some desire, idea, some push that I can just kind of, I feel... And we could describe, we could talk about that if we want to, but mm. where where I just like, yes, that's what this is what we're gonna do. Like this is how how, how we're gonna follow. Mm. When, in other words, when wisdom doesn't dictate one path over another. Yeah. So sometimes, in fact, most of the time, wisdom will say this. Mm-hmm. It's not wise to do that. And you can you can navigate a lot of life that way. And then there's sometimes where it's like, I both are. Both are options, and I think sometimes the Lord puts them in front of you, and you can, and it's like the whole multiple blessable paths. You could go either one; God will bless yeah. you either way. Yeah. And then sometimes it's either one, but there's a spiritual preference mm-hmm. that you can feel. So, for instance, for me recently, there was a church on the move decision that needed to be made. It was a big one, and I was all but completely decided that no was the answer, and I got into a meeting. And I started considering the possibilities of yes, and all of this, all I could say is just spiritual energy or momentum just started to hit me, meaning I just started to feel like this sense of we, I don't know what all it's going to lead to, but I think we should do this. 
and wisdom. So it wasn't the choice between, and we, this was probably, this probably needs to be a week of this series. I need to think about how to talk about how to hear from God <laughs> using wisdom. Yeah. Because so much, like, a lot of people get themselves in trouble. I learned this from my dad. I would never violate wisdom on a spiritual nudge. I would never do it. Unless I, unless the spiritual nudge was so more like a spiritual shout, yeah. like I knew that I knew that I mm-hmm. knew, but otherwise I would never violate. In other words, what I wouldn't do is go. Well, I know this is a bad financial decision, but I really feel like the Lord's leading us to do it. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. So, so I'm not talking about that. I think a lot of people, a lot of people, spirit led people, like they get their. Oh, they get themselves in trouble so many, oh, many times yeah, because totally. they violate wisdom in mm-hmm. order to choose what they where they think the Lord what, is leading. Where they think he's leading, but ultimately it's kind of like I was talking about before, you're a mixed bag. Yeah. And so we've got stuff going on yeah. inside of us yeah. that we have to learn how to set our personal motives and agendas aside yeah. because we want to put God said all over that oh, yeah. sometimes. Because we because because truth be told, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just accepting that. And I think and I and, and I think I think the idea of of being able to somehow get completely neutral in your heart and doing what is like setting a you know it's impossible. You can't you're never yeah, gonna you're be able not to do gonna it. Do it. And yeah. yeah. And then in that instance I think when it's come down to, I, I would say there's there's the yes no idea yeah. like what you're kind of like this kind of spirit, um, man. I really feel like peace in this direction. I don't feel peace in this direction. In addition to wisdom, which yeah. is what you're talking about, um, but then there's also just honesty before God yeah. when you're making a decision and saying, God, I know that I have skin in the game here yeah. and I need your help and I need your grace yeah. as I as I walk this thing out because I know I'm not going to do it perfectly. Yeah. Let's talk about that for a second, the peace the peace thing, because that, yeah. that's a real common thing that gets said yeah. in Christian yeah. oh, I circles. Just had so peace let's about talk it. about yeah. you know, it. Right. I just have a yeah. peace about this. Mm-hmm. I get it. I understand that. Um, and I've used... And I, and I, I, I've heard different people talk about you know, like Keller. Actually, I think actively, yeah, describes not that that's not really much of a leading, <laughs> but I think it is. Yeah. Um. But maybe not in the way that people think mm. it is. So, so when we say peace about something, um, where I would go is to to where is it Acts fifteen? I think it is where they say it seemed. Good to the Holy Spirit and, and to us. Mm-hmm. So it's the, it's the idea that as we talked this through, this seemed to be the path that the Lord was le- like. It just seemed, I don't know, good. We go this way, mm-hmm. and I, I've I've had that happen many times in my life where it's like, yep, that's when I feel. So I wouldn't it's such a. It's well, this is where wisdom is required. Yeah. I wouldn't say that feeling stress about something is always an indication that I should not do it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the leading of the Lord would be to do something that you're terrified of doing. A hundred percent, yes. But, but more often than not, at least in my experience, I, I, He's not leading me toward things that are that are. Um, terrifying but more toward things that in my description seem good mm-hmm. that seems like the that seems mm-hmm. i feel i feel like that's doable mm-hmm. achievable mm-hmm. i don't feel like another so so like my if my dad were here he could give so many examples of this because of the movement that we come out of there's so many <laughs> pastors leaders whomever that in effort to follow god put themselves under such stress that in, in some cases killed them, mm-hmm. like literally died of a heart attack because they put themselves under financial stress thinking that they were being bold in their faith by yeah. pursuing some project, mm-hmm. some building campaign mm-hmm. that was way over, over the capacity of what people could actually do and give. And and so so it's just in, in an essence violating wisdom in order to pursue what we feel like God is telling us to do. Yeah. And so they end up with all of this stress and burden and and end up, you know, 
in a bad place. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah, I was thinking about how, and we talk about next steps all the time around here, right? But what God, the way He's going to typically lead us is, what's your next obedience step? Yeah, it's not something that's like far fetched. Sure. God could give you an idea for something that seems, and you're like, oh, I don't know, but this this is awesome. That's great. Let that stay there. What's your next obedient, so here's, faithful step? I totally agree. Here's what I'm looking forward to getting into, and I don't want to, I don't want to uh, skip ahead of next week, but yeah. or to next week, but. I think so much of this, and so much of the the problems that people have is that we want to operate more off of feels than we want to operate off of what the Lord is actually, like Scripture. A hundred percent, And so people don't have a biblical imagination, meaning they don't know God's character or ways Mm -hmm. as based on Mm -hmm. Scripture. So they have, so we end up with ideas of, I'm certain this is the Lord, only I can read through the Bible and see but God doesn't lead people to do things like that. That's yeah. not that's not God. Hmm. But we're and so and so I think sometimes let's just say that God said that quote is is a like spiritual laziness. I I'm I'm skipping. I don't have to I don't I don't really need to get to know God through his word. Right. I can just discern from a feelings based mm-hmm. thing. That this is what God would have. Well, surely God would want me to be happy, or surely mm-hmm. God would. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder how many people like. So, so they use the the when you use like following peace, mm-hmm. disconnected yes. from scripture and uh, wisdom. Yes. yes, as as given through scripture, <laughs> then you end up just following your own desires and feelings. Yeah, Completely I'm picturing agree. when I was a teenager, a really big thing was I'm just praying about whether I should be dating this person or not. And it's like, <laughs> this person is an idiot. Yeah. And they're living yeah. a terrible life. Yes. And yes. you're just praying about whether you should be together and pursuing like uh, maybe our future together. Yeah. And you're just yeah. like, no. It's already it's in the word already. So <laughs> it's there. So read I, it and apply it to your life. You don't need God to so true. send you a new message. It's already in the book. <laughs> yeah. So good. Pick it up and read it yes. and do what it says. There's yes. a couple of things that I'm hearing yes. us talk about that I think are interesting. That the times we want to hear from God the most are when it's around something that we want. Yeah. Or yeah, when we're looking good. for guidance. Like what should what should I do? And God doesn't, when He speaks, He's speaking a whole range of things to us. And sometimes it's correction. Yeah. And sometimes it's comfort. Yeah. And sometimes it's not necessarily, oh, well, you need to go to this place, this corner of the street, and talk to sure. this guy. So maybe. Right. But, Rarely. But yeah. most of the time, He's going to point you back to Scripture. And so if you're if you're wondering about what what's the next right thing for me to do, I don't know, you could... I'm <laughs> get on your keep stay on but, that soapbox. Uh, but I'm thinking about like I was reading I I've been reading in Colossians lately and Colossians 3 says tells us what to put off and to put on. Yeah. And so if right. you want to know yeah. If you want God to speak to you, yeah. um, then you can... Prayerfully and introspectively reading the scripture you absolutely is a great should. place to start. It is yeah. a, the, yes, it's, it's the, best the best place, place to, yeah. start. to start. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and through scripture, you bec- I think you become the kind of person who can more accurately mm-hmm. hear from God. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, I've had, I've had experiences where, again, well-meaning people who love the Lord, but... They're so eager to hear from God. They're not <laughs> a lot of their a lot of their hearing from God shows up like, does the number seven hundred and eighteen mean anything to you? Yeah. And it's just like, well, uh, it sounds like because I've been those... praying for you, and that number just keeps coming up in my spirit. Yeah. Seven hundred and eighteen. I had somebody say that to me. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I don't even know what number it was, oh but just gosh. does that mean anything to you? No, it, it does not like mean anything those, to me. Uh, yeah. Were you calling for your future to be read? And they just keep. How about this number? Oh, like, I guess what I would. I guess yeah. what I would say to a person like that is, where do you find that? Yeah. Like biblically, do you have mm-hmm. any instance, mm-hmm. any instance, 
of God directing someone from, you know, to another person to say, does this mean anything to you? And I just think, come on, like, it's not, if I, if I said, does the color green mean anything? I mean, chances are you could probably find <laughs> that because that's how our brains work. Connection, huh? <laughs> that's how our brains yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. We're like, like, oh, let me think. Well, I was, yeah. I, the, green I was, was just, my mom's favorite color. Oh my gosh, it's the Lord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like, like that is, I just, that's, yeah. There's so many, like, it's, so many other better ways to hear from God, primarily hearing through. That's why That's why there's a lot of other things that balance around this. Mm-hmm. Scripture, uh, community, c- c- community mm-hmm. counsel, wisdom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think these are things that, that need to be brought into this conversation mm-hmm. so that what, what doesn't end up happening is that we just end up going with impressions, leadings, feelings, mm-hmm. and get ourselves into all sorts of trouble. Because people yeah. do. They have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Many times and we end up hurting other people or hurting ourselves mm-hmm. because we're not mm-hmm. really listening to the Lord. We're just listening to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so you might say, well, how do I balance all of that? With? Again, that's, that's, that's where we're going to go as we get deeper. Into, so I am convinced you can hear from God, and I'm convinced it can happen in a much more everyday, relatable kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also convinced that the people who are hearing from God the most are the people who are listening to Him through the very ordinary ways you can hear from God on a daily basis, which is Scripture, the church, that sort of thing, through the 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 the, the counsel of of believers, if you will. Like I think that's where um, I think being formed into someone you, like you you become someone who's capable of hearing God's voice mm-hmm. because you can start to discern that's that's not God mm-hmm. uh, uh, more regularly mm-hmm. than you could if you really it, yeah and it doesn't mean anyway there's I mean it doesn't mean that God doesn't speak to people who don't know the Bible at all He absolutely does but it's just. I would just be careful with that kind of thing. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying. Because it's a, in most of those encounters in scriptures, it is him revealing himself to those people yeah. and bringing them in. Like, so it's, yeah. it's more, if you don't, if they don't know God yet, most of those stories, I mean. So I think and, about Isaac yeah. uh, Woody. I've interviewed him for previous podcasts before, and his story of like God showing up in his car. Mm-hmm. He didn't, wasn't a believer at all, mm-hmm. and but just knew God was in the car with mm-hmm. him. I totally buy that. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally buy that. But it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was. It was kind of a burning bush moment. For, my my yeah. hunch is, if I could talk to Isaac, he probably has only had that experience like one time. Yeah. And 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 you don't want to go chasing that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So there was a guy. There's a guy in COTMU, and maybe if if no one knows this, the okay. answer to this, then you can. But he's in COTME right now, and I want to say he was he was he came to Blake with a question of something that he had asked about, but he didn't know the answer. And as it turned out, it was was totally biblical. But he had been thinking about it, and the Lord the Lord had spoken it to him, and he he didn't know it was in the Bible, but he was asking about it. Do you know this story? Yeah, and I don't remember the specific reference though. Yeah. but Blake did tell me about it. Pretty so. amazing. Yeah, but he was unaware of it being a yeah. biblical, and he just started crying. If I'm not mistaken, when Blake yeah. was like, "This is yeah, that's the Lord." And he was just like, holy cow, like he could yeah. hear God, yeah. but he didn't know it was in there. And it yeah. was just like, that's the Lord's. Like that. What I love about that one is that we're judging what someone has. So one, he's coming yeah. humbly, I yeah. don't know. And Blake could have easily have said, nope, that's not from God. Okay, yeah. okay, I've learned. Yeah. You know, like, okay, good to know. Mm-hmm. But But then you're taking it to a more mature, seasoned believer mm-hmm. who's – got a good understanding of scripture and weighs what is being said against what we find in scripture. And if the two line up, then we can say, yeah, that's God speaking to you. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. So- it's. I mean, it is really amazing how all of those things can work together. And the th- times when it gets, I think, dangerous is when you separate yourself from this and you oh, yeah. separate yourself from community. Yeah. And I we'll get into that in future weeks, but what would you say to someone who comes up to you and says, well, God told me X, Y, Z, and it just feels a little bit off? I just say, 
Um, I would just say, be open-handed with that. Mm. Maybe it is the Lord. Mm. And I wouldn't go rearranging your whole life yeah. to pursue whatever it is that you think you may have heard from the Lord. Maybe, and maybe not. Maybe it'll get more clear as you journey with Him. I would bring that. I would just, I would just leave that in the. Maybe even have in your mind. Uh, maybe that's God drawer. Yeah. Maybe that's the Lord. Yeah. And there's going to be some things that are in there that you're going to be able to take out and put in the. That was definitely God. Yeah. Drawer. Yeah. And then there's going to be some things that you're going to take out and go. That was definitely not, not God. <laughs> Let's not put that in. Yeah, so we know. We now know. Mm-hmm. But I think. I think. You know, for me, I I watch it's 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 depending. So some of this is just personal wiring, and so I have to be careful because I'm. It's, this is just so much easier for me. But I I I'm very I watch how other people respond to my own thoughts, ideas, even sermons. If I don't see, I'm not the kind of person, by the way, who shows up and says, "This is what we're to do. This is what the Lord said." If I if I if I one I never do that. But two, if I'm sitting in a room with all of our let's say leadership and pastoral team mm-hmm. and I come in and I say, "Guys, I was praying and I just feel like this. We're supposed to do this." If I get all kinds of questions, consternation, hesitation, I shut that thing down. Some people are like, why would you do that? The Lord has spoken to you. I don't, I don't I'm looking at them and I'm going, maybe the Lord's speaking to me right now. Mm-hmm. What makes you think or value your perspective, like what you feel inside? Some people do. Mm-hmm. Some people are just wired up to just, if they feel it, it's true. Mm-hmm. I am not one of those people. <laughs> and I, I actually think if you're more wired up that way, that's a little bit dangerous and you'll have to just, it's something to watch. But I, I pay close attention to what I would call the multitude of counselors or the church, people mm-hmm. around me. And if they don't, if I don't see it resonating with other people, it, you know, Acts 15, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not sure who said that. If it's James, it probably is James. <sighs> I just, I think. I think it is James because he was, uh, yeah, the, he was leading he the was church doing in Jerusalem the at that Jerusalem time. the Jerusalem Council, and it was like, we don't need to put any more regulations yeah, but, on them. But, ha- but he doesn't say, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to me. Mm-hmm. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And so I think you're going to want to have around you, this is again why the church is so important, some people in your life that, are not just, and man, especially if you're younger, not just cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. I think particularly, I would guess, you can tell me if this is true, you're younger than me, Lindsay, that my hunch is the younger you go, the less apt people are to tell you, of your own age, to tell you that you're wrong. Yeah, of your own age, for sure. For sure. And and then my you hunch have is that culturally, of, we don't yeah. want to impose our opinions on other people. Yeah. Now, maybe you have friends that are like that, but I think having good, godly, probably older than you, or at least more spiritually mature than you, or people that you just, that have proven themselves trustworthy over time, that have made good, so... Which so is a not, key. Not proven your buddy them, yeah. who's... <laughs> Yeah. You know, part time employed and lives at home yeah. and is in 29 years old and done really nothing. So, like, I'm yeah. not saying don't be friends with that person, yeah. but I'm saying also, also maybe have someone that's like, you know, got a little life experience in them mm-hmm. and been mm-hmm. done a few things and, and has proven themselves like that they know how to follow the Lord over time and, uh, and get would, people like that in your life and yeah. submit ideas to them and then and then be all right with it and not upset when they say, that seems weird to me. And if it seems weird to them, then it should seem weird to you. It doesn't yeah. mean you're handing the keys of your life over to them. Right. But I want to take their opinion really, really seriously. And you said this, but just to harp on it just a little <laughs> proving themselves trustworthy yeah. is huge are they living a, a type of life yes. that that looks like that's god god works in them they listen to god they're humble they're reading scripture 
those are the type of people you want speaking into your life. And I would say this too. This is a big one, especially especially younger, because it tends to be this way younger. Because I, I remember it was this way in my generation as well. Someone who's done that consistently over a period of time, and I and I mean more than a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because especially when we're young, it's easy to get really zealous. What I found was that the really zealous mm-hmm. Christians when I was younger, many of them do not even know the Lord at all these days yeah. because they go fully in and then they burn out and they're gone. And it's mm-hmm. and so the person that you think may hear from God the most or talks about hearing from God the most might not even be serving the Lord in five years. What you want is someone who's done this for a while. Mm-hmm. And that again, that's, that's why the, the church ought to be a more than one generation kind of thing. You want more than just a club of people all your own age. You're looking for people who are a little further down the road than you. That's why community is really helpful. Maybe like, you know, Heather. I mean, even Heather, who just turned 50, is is reaching out to uh, Mur- Muriel Richardson at Church on the Move. Uh, her husband, she's a widow. Her husband passed away mm-hmm. not too long mm-hmm. ago, uh, Kurt. And I mean, this this is a rock solid family. Been been here at COTM, serving the Lord faithfully. Uh, her, her her son and his wife been here for so long, faithfully, just like love the Lord consistently for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. And now I don't, I don't I'm not sure how old Muriel is, but she's you know ahead of Heather. And so Heather's like, talk to me about how did you find your purpose in that she writes letters to people and yeah. notes. And it's like, yeah. how did you find that at, how did that, so yeah. you're just, you're learning to like help me mm-hmm. to see how did you follow the Lord in yeah. this? Cause this is not just something you started last week and oh, you're all excited about it. No, I want to know, you've been doing this for years. Yeah. Tell mm-hmm. me about how that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's what the benefit talks of the church. About it, uh, talks about that uh, letter writing on the last episode of Life Heather in does? Motion. Yeah. yeah. But, it's beautiful. And how long she had been writing those letters for. Yes. And, but yeah. there's something there's something wonderful about going to someone who's been doing this longer than you have and has learned some things. It's ahead of you in their walk with Christ. And you can say, okay, uh, fill me in on this. Help they me understand this. They can bring that wisdom so that you yes. might not have exactly. already. They're like, oh, hold on. So what you think you're in turmoil over, like I screwed up or whatever, they're going to be like, okay, keep going, man. You're I, I, fine. I have this it's with people okay. in my life. You know, my dad would certainly be one of those, but there are others that I call up when, hey, help me. What do you think about this? Mm. You know, what is it? You know, raising kids, mm-hmm. whatever. You just, you, you need that. And then also just the people that I'm you know, I've got other spiritually mature brothers around me that I can, man, if if I'm doing something or thinking about something and they just kind of look at me cross-eyed, you know, or sideways, whatever, it's like, okay, I need to pay attention to that. Yeah. I just would never dare violate or just, let me say it this way, run roughshod over the counsel of people who I deeply trust. Um especially that have proven themselves over time. Mm-hmm. Again, I get it. There's times when you're like 19 years old and your friends who are also 19 think what you're, you know, you, you can get a lot of bad counsel that way. So that's why, that's why I want to emphasize people who have really proven themselves, right, Lindsay? Yeah. We want yes. to emphasize that. <laughs> but when you get that from people, yeah. one, either their validation, that's good, you know, or... I don't, I'm not sure. Again, like Brian is, Brian Job is one of these people in my life. He's a very wise man. Mm. And if I have a thought about something and I see him hesitate about it, mm. I, I lay that thought down. Mm. I just I just treat that not wholly as the voice of the Lord, but I'm just like, okay, that's a good perspective. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to have to be a lot more proof about this from the Lord. Mm-hmm. The Lord's going to have to lead a whole lot stronger if if I'm if I'm to do this because I trust mm-hmm. that man mm-hmm. and you know it's like stuff like that I, yeah. I really I really use that as as the voice of God in my life to balance out feelings thoughts ideas mm-hmm. that I may wonder are from God mm-hmm. I look to see yeah. what they how how people like him respond yeah. and they could be those thoughts but yeah. yeah having that wise counsel scripture all of that to balance it out. I mean, God did make your brain. Like he, you know what I mean? Like we, (laughs) 
<laughs> he can. No, That's but you're right. Really he can. Good. Yeah. Like yeah. he can help us to think. He can yes. lead and guide and direct us um, through through our thoughts. I mean, that's a lot of times what happens, but it's within the counsel, like godly counsel, scripture, all of those things working together. So you shared a couple of things this this weekend um, about how you have experienced God leading you. Mm. Um, and I know like if somebody goes back and listens to the sermon, um, you could share one of those stories if you wanted to, or you could share another story where you've you sensed God leading you. Um, yeah. Yeah, what we you talked we talked want- about like uh, some of the like bigger things or discern like discerning God's voice yeah. and like big decisions and things like that. I'm wondering if there's any like more practical day to day because I think that's where he's huh. Yeah, speaks a, a little more. Yeah, yeah. frequently. He, yeah, he leads. Yeah, he leads. Well, I mean, a yeah. lot of the. I mean, in some ways, Lindsay, what I would say is the day to day stuff. The way I the way I think of it is, I pray, try to pray more regularly on this. Lord, daily bread. So he says, your father knows what you need before you ask. So I have prayed more consistently lately. Lord, you know what I need before I ask, but I'm asking you for my daily bread. What do I need today? You know. Mm-hmm. Now, there are some times where I know I have a meeting or this, would you would you direct us here? But yeah. a lot of the time it's like, but there's other things I'm going to face today that I might not know or I don't know. And so I could use, would you, would you give me what I need today? Um, and I believe that God provides those things. So that there are answers to prayer, that that prayer. In other words, there's a certain competency I think that I have that I can just sort of for the daily stuff. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is not this. So so I am not one of those people that before I do anything, I'm like, all right, Lord, this, that, yeah. what, what. You know, I feel like God's given me a brain, as you said, He designed me with a brain. So let's mm-hmm. make some decisions. Let's you know. Um, when I do run into things that I feel like are overwhelming me, that's usually when I go to the Lord uh, or something that I just, you know, a sermon I know is significant. Okay, Lord, I, I, I need your guidance, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I'll go to him for those things. I can think of a time when, so just before I uh, asked Heather to marry me, I was debating on whether or not we should be married and I wanted to get married. But I could feel for various reasons and I some hesitancy from my parents. And as I said earlier, that really is a big deal to me, people that I trust. And it was just, there's a lot of things that go into that. I don't want to make them sound like bad people or any of this. It was just, we were, you know, I'm their firstborn. I was the first one to be married, all of this. So they just had some, I think, natural parent questions. But it really messed with me and messed with my confidence. And so one night I'm laying in bed. I still lived at home, I think, at this point. And Gabe was home probably from college. We had twin beds. You know, his was over here. Mine was over here. And we're talking, as we often did, at night. And I so appreciated this. This was, yeah, I was young. My dad was my pastor. Um, I had... You know, if anybody hears from God, it's Pastor George, you know, my dad. You know, I didn't call him Pastor George, but I mean, it would be him. You know, people saw him as that kind of spiritual authority, and I did too. And so the fact that he was questioning my desire to propose to Heather made me feel as though maybe he was hearing something from God that I was not hearing. And that night, Gabe, as I'm just sharing all this with Gabe, Gabe just says, Wit, if anybody's going to hear from God about whether or not you should marry Heather, it's going to be you. God will speak to you. That's so mm-hmm. good. And it, it was God <laughs> speaking to me mm-hmm. through him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I immediately had the confidence to go, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm so grateful for that conversation. I've never forgotten it. But it just, he just, yeah, it was it was what I needed to hear when I needed to hear it. And I just knew that's right. Mm-hmm. And and so that was that was another example I could have. I mean, other examples of just maybe sensing God's presence or his his care in particularly difficult situations. Some I don't want to share because they're it just wouldn't be right to 
share some of the personal details in, in, um, in some of those stories. But I can think of a couple of examples. One in a, I'm not going to share the details of it, but just um, it was a really personal thing um, with Heather and I in a, I don't, it's not a counseling session, it was a life plan. But man, the Lord spoke something to me that just, it was a thought that entered my mind even in the first person. It was me speaking to myself, but I knew like that, like, like, like I just knew this, this is true. I need this. And it was, um, maybe you could call it like an epiphany. It had Mm. that feeling Mm. of just coming Mm -hmm. to a realization Mm -hmm. of essentially what I was saying to myself is I don't want to this anymore. Mm -hmm. And I had never said that to myself before, but to say it was so liberating. Yeah. And it kind of began a journey for me of kind of living in a more differentiated manner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I needed it badly. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And so it was just, you know, it was it was in a moment of of desperation and a moment where I wasn't even looking necessarily. I wasn't desperately down on my knees saying, oh, God, I need you to speak. I was I was exiting a room. I was in a little room where we've been doing a little like a counseling type thing or facilitation. And I was going to the bathroom and walking from that room to the bathroom and in that little space, man. And I think that uh, Chris sent me a, a Pete Gregg's book or an excerpt, mm-hmm. and he was talking about these kind of the unexpected moments. And yeah. I'm like, holy cow, yeah. I've had that happen my whole life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So I did not. So recently I had, I am not the kind of person. Okay. Let me, I am not the kind of person who has dreams and thinks and wakes up and says, oh, that was the Lord. Yeah. Like it's maybe <laughs> happened like once or twice, like, or really? like, uh, like in my, in my whole almost 40 years. Um, but last week, last week, wow. it was just crazy. Um, I had a dream and I woke up and I was like, huh, that's interesting. And so I kind of put it over here at the end, at the, in the dream, I was in a really hard situation, like just a really tough situation. Yep. And, uh, and in my dream, I had someone come up who I didn't expect. It was actually, it was Brian Joe. Okay. <laughs> came, up, came up beside me. Yeah. And and my husband was standing over here and he just started praying for me. Wow. And I was like, what is going on? And so he prayed for me. And then I the last thing that I did before I woke up from the dream was I had my hands out like this and I was praying. I was praying a prayer of consecration. Yeah, wow. And so, um, and then... And then the, I, this is going to sound crazy. If we want to cut this out of the podcast, we totally can. <laughs> the next day, um, almost like, and I, like in a weird kind of way, everything happened wow. from, like from that dream. What? It was so, I have never had anything like that happen to me before. Wow. I, I would not even venture to say that it actually did happen unless very specific things <laughs> like yeah. actually incredible yeah Whoa. and so it was crazy yeah but i was in a very hard situation um and i was asking the lord what to do about it and um and i just got the sense that i was i just remembered my dream and mm. what i did at the end of it mm. And so, did Brian come and pray for you? No, he, but he, but like, yeah, no, he didn't. But we had a conversation. Um, I I told him, I said, I had a dream that you were yeah. praying for me, and yeah. he said, I was praying for you. Wow, and I was like, <laughs> wow, really? And he wow. and he's like, it's not that I don't ever pray for you, but this week I felt specifically like I oh was supposed gosh, to pray for you. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That's wow. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So what I love about all of that is one that there's nothing in that dream or experience that is that 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 goes outside the one the boundaries of scripture and the boundaries of wisdom. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about that. So in other words, if you had said, "So I had this dream that I was going to um, start a radio 
<laughs> station. Yeah. And 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 I needed to, you know, and it's like, so, oh, well, tell me about the experience that you have running radio stations. Oh, I have none. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but God's like, you would you'd be surprised. Yeah. How many people? That's exactly what they think. Like, yeah. they could. I'll just go from zero to. God will be blessing it. And it's like, you, it, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. But so often it's like it's some kind of out there sort of thing. And then mm-hmm. I'm just supposed to do this. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. this is beautiful because it's, it's um, I mean, it's comforting. Yeah. And it's reassuring it's, that God sees yeah. you. He's with you. He's He's gone ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And there's nothing about that that's like weird in the sense of. Yeah. It yeah. takes you outside of your outside of your. I, you know, I had a I had a dream, Wit, and the Lord told me I'm supposed to be the next pastor of Church on the Move. People do stuff like that. Yeah, that. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Which, which I think that if there's something that God has placed in your heart that you're that you have a sense about, I totally agree with where I think you're about to I, go. If God wants to do it, yeah. He'll do it. Yeah. Exactly. You don't need to, you don't go, to go broadcast broad- it to exactly. everyone. Put it exactly. in your mouth. Maybe that's God's drawing. Particularly Maybe the that's people God. that, you, that yeah. you think yeah. he's talking to you about. Like, I, God told me, I think we're supposed to be married. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before we started recording, I was saying that when I was date, just dating my husband, a girl came up to him at a, a breakfast with tons of people in front of tons of people, which... If you know my husband is horrifying, and said and said out loud for everyone to hear. Um, I think we God told me that we're supposed to be married, mm. and while he's dating me, incredible. Well, funny you didn't tell. He didn't tell me. Oopsie. <laughs> we joke often that he missed the Lord on that one. And <laughs> he ended up with me. Oopsies. Yeah. yeah you said this weekend that. It's in hindsight you can see so yeah. much, God so and, spoke and you do get way like, more, and it is this like confirmation of the faithfulness of God and just the and the yeah. confidence that you can hear His voice. Yeah, um, that happens time and time and time and time yeah. again. And so you start yeah. to kind of trust it a little bit yeah. more, yeah. not into a weird sense no. in any way, but just no. okay. I'm open to that if that's yeah. if that's what you're mm-hmm. wanting from from yeah. me, and I'm gonna. But I'm gonna keep working. In and, the meantime, yeah. I'm gonna be obedient. I'm yeah. gonna build my character. Yes, I'm gonna do the next right thing. Exactly. I'm gonna do everything that I know to do right now, in in the eventuality that you know something may or may not yeah. happen. But um, God is. But what I do know is that what I need today, I have. Yeah. Because God said He's gonna give it to me. I do feel like there are people probably listening that have some, I don't know, they just, they think that's great for you guys. Mm. (laughs) How lovely. How lovely that you have so much confidence around this. Um, How do we, like, what kind of encouragement? I've had meetings with people where they're just saying, like, I don't, I don't hear from, from God. Even when I sit down. Yeah. To read the scripture, it doesn't come alive to me in the way that I feel like it should. I don't know. Yeah. Do, we, do you have any encouragement for someone? Yeah. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. I would not quit. Um, and I would be looking for, I think one thing to just keep, uh, to, to, to think about is that is that God doesn't speak to us all in the same way. Mm-hmm. And perhaps you've just not found how God speaks to you yet. And um, and the other thing, too, is that, you know, I think when we say I've tried, I think we mean, I think a lot of times we mean surface level tried, like I gave that a, a, a quick shot. Mm-hmm. But I, I think you're going to have to, like, again, in my own life, hearing from the Lord at, 18 or 19 years old, did it happen a couple of times? Maybe, yeah. I mean, like right before I got married, sure. But more often, you know, the more I grew in my faith, uh, and the more I and the more I, you know, started reading. And by the way, for me, it was like I didn't read scripture consistently till well into my 30s. I was not. I, you know, I worked at a church, had leadership roles at a church had never read the whole Bible through myself, didn't understand a ton of it, um, that kind of thing. So it took a while before I really was willing to go, okay, let's really dig into this. And I think 
um, you know, I mean, I think if you're willing, here's a, I have to believe if you're, if you want to pursue God through the scripture, you can't, it can come alive and it will mm-hmm. come alive to mm-hmm. you. I don't think that there's, I, I just refuse to believe that there's someone out there that's like, well, none of this works for me. I'll just have to take mm-hmm. your word for it. No, I think, I think it, it may, it may, it may take you. I think sometimes we put in our mind certain boundaries or, or limits. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. No, maybe maybe you just have the wrong lifestyle going on right now. Maybe mm. the way you're choosing to live your life needs to change. Mm. And anyway, but I think that if you're willing to if you're willing to put in the effort and really diligently pursue God, I have no doubt that He will speak to you. It may just take a little bit longer than um, yeah, than just a kind of a I don't know initial try. Yeah, it may take a minute, but yeah, you can get there. Yeah, and if you belong to Jesus, yeah. You're hearing him way more than you probably sure. think you are. Sure. Yeah. And I'm just, I think you talked about it this weekend, John 10. Yeah. Just my sheep know my voice. Right. And the voice of a stranger, they're not going to follow. And so it is getting acquainted with the voice of the shepherd, um, the shepherd that has is... Well, I think putting the time in to yeah. understand what his voice... I mean, again, yeah. you're not going to hear God's voice when you're on your phone... Yeah. Eight, nine, ten hours a day. Yeah. yeah. Playing Fortnite. A hundred, yes. Two, three hours a day. Yeah. And then go, well, I can't figure out why I'm making bad choices and I don't hear the voice of God. Yeah. Or just, what, yeah, what, scrolling what, on social media. Yeah. Or, it's just yeah. It's like, that's not, that's not how that's going to happen. Yeah. So you're just expecting God to interrupt you and blow you up with like a burning bush type mm-hmm. of a moment. And, and occasionally he does that. But I would even argue in those situations, those are not people just being, you know, living frivolous, careless yeah. lives. Yeah. So, yeah, I more, think... Yeah, more often it's a whisper. Yeah. Yeah, and so you, you're going to have to put yourself in a position to hear it. Mm-hmm. And that's probably going to require some some changes. Mm-hmm. But if you're, you know, I, I don't know, I find that when people get, when you get desperate enough, it's amazing how God starts to show up and speak. Yeah, it is.